Hey, it's Topher right here on Geek Public Radio on geekpublicradio.com. How are you guys doing? We're getting ready to kick off another show. We're going to talk about a little bit about Age of Empires. We're going to talk about Dune. Uh, Age of Empires 4, sorry. Dune. Uh, we're going to talk about what we're doing here at the station and a lot more right here. All right, so yes, we are going to talk about this, but first let's talk about Dune. Dune. <laughs> the wonderful guys over at Modifius. Yes, the wonderful people at Modifius. Hey, everybody, we love them. what's going on? We do, we do love them guys out there. Uh, they send us uh, cool stuff, and we get to look at new games and things like that. But anybody, uh, I am uh, Crazy Chris. From Sunday Night Madness here uh, with Topher, the Paranormal Hobo on the Geek Public Radio uh, Network. And I am super happy to be here. I hope you guys are all having a good night. Uh, hopefully you guys are joining us live in the member section uh, where you can interact with us via our Discord. It is $5 a month, but when you look at some of the subscription rates on some of the other streaming services that are out there, that's relatively cheap. <clears throat> we get you access to a crap load of movies, all of our brand new content, members only section where we have videos and cuts from the show that didn't quite make it in, our Discord page, everything under the sun that you can possibly imagine for members. We've got it for you there. So I, check us out. Honestly, we have like 44 different movies on there right now. Yeah. So uh, anything and ranging series. from mystery, thrillers, horror movies, um, all the like, we have all of right. that ready for you in our members-only section. So consider joining us and helping us out to keep us independent from the big tech moguls and the scary men in black. But T's not here, so I guess it's I can't really expand upon that <laughs> paranoia. But anyways, they're real. Anyway, so yeah, guys over at Medifia sent us this kick-ass uh, RPG from um, – the, the movie Dune. Right. Um, now, the Dune media, as far as the movie is concerned, I'm familiar with, but uh, Dune ranges way, and that's D-U-N-E, Dune, not yeah. Doom, not to be confused with id Software's Doom. Um, Shout out to uh, uh, S- uh, Sandy P- Patterson. <laughs> so, uh, yeah. Anyways, Dune from the Herbert Brothers, by the way. But not those Herbert Brothers. Different Herbert Brothers. <laughs> Frank. <laughs> Frank and... Uh, Oh, man, I can't remember his name. Benny? I don't remember. <laughs> <laughs> Frank and Benny. I don't know. Anyways, Herbert Brothers, and even Kevin J. Anderson uh, as well contribute to the Dune legacy via uh, book format. Um, I think there's a comic series. There's web. There's graphic novels. There's all kinds of crazy stuff out there now for Dune. Um, and it's revitalized its popularity with the recent release of the uh the Dune, or did it come out yet? Yeah, they, it's getting ready to come out. Getting ready to come out, yeah. So with the, the, new, the new theatrical release of the new Dune movie... Um, there's going to be a renewed interest in the actual Dune properties. So with that, Modifius decided to do an intelligent thing, utilizing their own system, 2D20s, by the way. Um, it's, a, it's a pretty unique system, I think. I kind of like the way it works. But they decided to take their unique game system and apply it to the Dune universe with the help of Kevin J. Anderson and the Herbert Brothers uh, and many, many others. They were able to develop this brand new game uh, that you can take and create the tabletop system. Uh, so it functions similarly to D&D, Pathfinder, um, any of the Call of Cthulhu, any of the uh, standard RPG systems that you're used to, <clears throat> only it defers in the way that it's not a D20 or D6 system. In fact, Dune... Do. In fact, Dune doesn't even use D6 uh, at all. So there are no challenge dice. It is simply and um, universally 2D20. Uh, and that functions based on a system where you have positives and negatives uh, and a target number with one number being uh, with one role being your standard challenge the other role being the benefits that you can utilize plus there's a whole story format behind it too so it's actually pretty unique and it allows storytellers to be very flexible with the way the system works it allows for a lot more uh, what's the what's a good word for that imagination from players on how they want to interact with their environment and it promotes usage of skills without hampering the story or gameplay with a bunch of technicalities that can can bog down a system. Even the most streamlined systems suffer from from bog down, and it's it's pretty bad. Pathfinder 2.0, not so bad. 
but a lot my, of you guys remember like, 3.5. What, what, what kills me, <laughs> what kills me with, with the Pathfinder thing, though, is you have uh, D&D 5th Edition that came out. Yep. And they were like, we're going to streamline, we're going to reduce the amount of feats because it got a little out of hand with 3.5. It got a lot of out of hand with 3.5. <clears throat> you know, so it was like, okay, we're, we're going to scale this back a bit and we're going to make it more of a streamlined game. Pathfinder on the other hand was like, oh no, I, they, it was like exhibit. Like he's just straight up like, oh, we heard you liked feet, so uh, we're going to give you feats for having feats. Yeah, we're going to give you an entire book of feats just <laughs> because you have a feat. As a matter of fact, if you buy this feat, you get to purchase the book that gives you access to all <laughs> the other price. feats. <laughs> <laughs> but no, like take you a get picture a, of your character sheet. <laughs> it was like, so uh, you get uh, a feat for for just being a race. You get right. a whole series of feats that you yep. can go through for which I think is cool. Like race. the racial feats is actually a really neat thing for. And me. then your your ancestry and and all that other stuff. You get feats for that, and then you get and that isn't even before you level. Like there's three <laughs> levels of feats that you can get work through, mm -hmm. just even before you hit level two. One of my favorite <laughs> things in Pathfinder, especially if they're making uh, if the DM decides to make a level one character, he's like, oh, you got to be a level one character, and I'm like, rich parents. <laughs> <laughs> What's that do? Thousand gold. And well, then, there you go. And then there's another one that's um, born in the streets, I think it is, or raised by the streets or whatever, <laughs> which is funny because I have rich parents. Yeah, right. <laughs> but it gives you a plus two to your initiative. Batman. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I wasn't well, going to say it. <laughs> <laughs> no, but you're like rich parents, but you're born, you're running the streets. So Right, ba Batman orphan story. That Yeah. yeah. But yeah, rich parents. With a thousand gold, so I can pretty much buy whatever I need to right out of the gate. <laughs> right, uh, and then the plus two dexterity, <laughs> and then if I take uh, improved initiative, <laughs> get a plus six <laughs> just to start the game. But then you just kind of mid max your dex, and you're like, okay, I got a plus eight to my initiative. Wait, what? <laughs> <laughs> don't worry about it. I got rich parents. <laughs> <laughs> like, don't worry about it. Um, yeah, I'm so, literally making Batman over here. Just, right, it, it, it's just, all good. It's fine. Uh, Dune takes. That type of system, um, and, and it's not quite as expansive as a Pathfinder 2.0. However, it is still incredibly inclusive. There are lots of classes, lots of races. For those of you that are familiar with the Dune universe, uh, there are plenty of classes. There are plenty of, uh, not necessarily races because it's all the human race, <laughs> but there are different Planets. types of humans that you can play as. So you have the psychics. The uh the what the mentats yeah that's right uh the nobles you have uh the 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 cyborg I cannot remember what the what the fighters are called the not the initiates oh my gosh what are they called they they're the agents they're essentially the agents of 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 the emperor and I cannot remember what the name of of that uh, <laughs> particular class is called but uh, they're pretty awesome um you, you can uh utilize uh, the, the, those particular skills. So each one comes with like a set of skills that's unique to their, to their personage. Uh, to so their you can personage. literally look at them and go like, I have a particular set of skills. I'm, I mean, really you do. <laughs> yeah. yeah. You can absolutely pull the Liam Neeson out of your anus and uh, apply it to Dune. If that's what you so choose to do. Um, mm -hmm. But yeah, but if you're familiar with the lore, uh, they're like the super smart humans. There's the psychic witch humans. Um, and, but of course it all centrally revolves around, Spice. Not spice from the spice mines of Kessel. Because that would just be too easy. Nope. One planet in the entire universe that has spice. And it is on Arrakis. 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 Is that what I can't remember if I, I knew I was probably butchering. I haven't seen Dune in a really long time. So me pronouncing any of those words is terrible. And like I said, I'm not super familiar with the medium of the books. I've not read any of the books. So, um, Blasphema. I'm telling you. However, I have read the, uh, not all of it. It's a pretty large book. It's like 340 pages or something like that of the uh, the Dune medium from Odiphius. And it's really well written. Uh, they do a great job expanding upon the story. They give great examples of how to play the game the way that it's intended to be played. Uh, they have a system that you can purchase outside of the book if you don't want to spend, I think it's $40 on the, on the actual book itself. Uh, if you don't want to spend that money on the book, then you can buy the starter kit, and it comes with uh, several different items to help you get started. It's basically like a thin little booklet to basically equate, uh, equate, 
create a quick game uh, that allows you to jump right in and get started. But yeah, uh, Dune Digital, I believe is what it's called. But let me double check on the actual name itself because I don't want to get this wrong. Uh, at Dune, Adventures in the Imperium. Then that's what the name of the, I forgot that's what the name of the actual uh, overarching <clears throat> thing is. It's controlled by the Emperor and then there's major houses, minor houses, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Um, but yeah, it's called Dune Adventures in the Imperium. And it's uh, yeah, it's available on Modifius. dot com, uh, where you can you can purchase it from there. Um, you can also download the PDF uh, from there as well. It still costs money. I mean, it is a yeah. it is a book, so it's still going to cost you. But um, we've but it got it here, much. and it's like I said, it's it's incredibly cool. And it is it is a uh, uh, Modifius and Gale Force Nine. Gale Force Nine. Yep. Uh, yeah, let's see. Make like sure we the, give the, the, the proper attribute tri- him. Uh, so, legendary Modifius, the two D twenty system. Um, yeah, yeah, it's it's neat. From what I've seen so far, it's I, I think it'll it'll be pretty unique. I'm not familiar, super familiar uh, with the two D twenty system, but it looks really cool the way that they utilize it. And it's a Modifius house system is is actually what it is. They've created the system. Yeah, because uh, it it was. Uh they moved the uh, um, Call of Cthulhu, uh, Octung Cthulhu uh, stuff over to the 2D20. You can still use um, Chaosium or Savage Worlds, which is what they originally did. Mm-hmm. Uh, but they've updated it now, and it all runs off of the other. But you can still use your favorite system uh, to play in the Octung Cthulhu uh, games, which is where I got first alerted to uh, Modifius because World War II Call of Cthulhu is awesome. Well, it's the best Call of Cthulhu. <laughs> um, I mean, you, you the, literally there's a module that gives you Nazi zombies. Well, yeah, because the right off the bat, like very first module, and that's everybody wants Nazi, Nazi zombies. zombies. You're not gonna find that in Dune. But I'm sure if you tried hard enough, I, I know some people that could probably break it enough to make <laughs> zombie Nazis. Um, but yeah, so you guys uh, will be able to play as, like I said, as many different uh, subclasses of human um, and and be able to take advantage of that. But uh, I'm excited for the system. I'm excited to get together with a couple people and try to play this. I think we'll probably get the game group together and give this a shot and see how that goes. But yeah, it's uh should be pretty fun. I like it. I, I'm excited. <laughs> I'm excited. I'm just. I'm excited. I don't want to overuse that word. I don't want to. I don't want to excite that word. <laughs> but I want you to be excited for Dune. Right. Get excited. You heard word. <laughs> but yeah. So. Uh, uh, yeah, the segue just like fell off the cliff. Yeah, it really did. Like <laughs> super slow too. Like usually we we trip and fall, and it's like ah, we all recognize it. No, this one was like, wait a minute, we had a segue. What was it? <laughs> this is what happens when you don't write stuff down, kids. Hey, where did it go? <laughs> uh, special shout out to everybody that's paying attention right now on the GPR live show. Hello. What up? What's up? Uh, so the stuff that we we're moving into with the uh, uh, with the station. Ah, that's that's. Okay, now now I got it. Okay, yeah. so in the vein of Dune, and for those Dune fans out there, yeah. you'll know exactly what that that was. Yeah, that the, was the, funny. The spice must flow. Yeah, in the vein. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we are. We're in the mouth because that's actually how it's we consumed, are working whatever. on a lot of uh, <laughs> uh, of cool stuff uh, coming up. So. I agree. I think uh, I'm. We're going to be starting some new shows. All right, so we've mm-hmm. got the true crime show right. that's going to be coming out. So we're going to discuss uh, things like the Zodiac Killer, uh, the Highway Killer, the um, uh, Richard Ramirez Night Stalker, uh, things like that. So, uh, you know, Charles Manson, Ted Bundy, um, everything like that. Those things will all be discussed. But we're going to try to introduce to you some things that have not been hammered on 800 freaking <laughs> times by everybody under the sun. Like... Zodiac Killer. Uh, everybody's got a favorite serial killer. Like right. Mine's the Zodiac. And it's just the story behind all of it is super bizarre. And it's really neat. But it's been done to death at this point, And it's, what's the point of having another podcast talking about the Zodiac, right? That's well, I mean, it fun. was even even on um, 
It was even on uh, American Horror Story. And we all know that was Ramirez. That's it, Ramirez, yeah, Night Stalker. But again, that's another one that's been yeah. damn near done to death, too. In the 90s, it was a big deal, which, understandably so, like, it was pretty severe with the things that he did. So I get why it was such a big deal. It was mo- uh, one of the most modern serial killers, uh, infamously, in history. So, uh, but yeah, so we're going to be doing, like, a true crime type series. Um, some working titles, we'll get to those shortly, but um, <laughs> I, I, we have we have some ideas um, but that'll be uh, it'll be somebody completely different. So we're gonna actually introduce a different personality to the show, or not to the show, to the network. Um, and hopefully, you, know, you guys take to her, and uh, you guys enjoy her reading and, and her interpretations of these documentaries. I think it'll be pretty cool. Yeah, um, be cool. We got some horror stuff coming. Right? Yep. Uh, we're gonna do some some horror movie reviews, some horror discussion, talking about like uh, the different. Uh, the different elements of what makes a horror movie, maybe spoiling some of the special effects, uh, but just the different things that go into the creation and culture of horror movies and horror films. So we're going to be horror tackling stories, yeah. horror movies, yep. horror, you know. horror movies, horror films, horror books. Um, some of the great authors that create horror and no, I'm not talking about Stephen King who literally would just crap on a table and make a story about it. Um, I like hey. his books, but sometimes I'm like, Kind of phoned it in there, Steve. (laughs) And and some of the most, um, quote unquote, provocative (laughs) uh, imagery in those books. Uh, Yeah, that's a tame way of saying that that (laughs) dude's got some serious issues that nobody pays attention to. Right. But, you know. You just kind of gloss over, you know. Yeah, it's like, oh, it's a good story. Child orgies and stuff like that. It's pretty gross. Some pretty nar, some pretty nar nar stuff in there, <laughs> uh, but we will be discussing things like that, like yes. some of the quirks and things that some of your favorite horror authors might have. Um, like here's a here's one. All right, we like Cthulhu. We yeah, like love, love Lovecraftian, Craft. right? We we love those types of stories. Lovecraft was racist. Like that's it's pretty well documented that he had a history of being racist. Now. <laughs> You have to understand the time and stuff right. like that. We're not going to get into it, but that is a quirk. Well, I wouldn't say and it's a quirk, but on to, by today's mirror, if you hold up societal mirror to, you know, if you hold that up to today's societal standard, he would fail immeasurably. Right. It would be really bad. But being able to view art in the abstract and being able to look at it in the time it was presented gives you a different understanding of it. And so the story can still be good. And you can still dislike the things that the authors have done. Right. And that's kind of what you do. You separate the art from the artist. And mm-hmm. that's what's important. And we'll help and you guys know, discern and do all that. Yeah, and, and then something you have to do, uh, mm-hmm. anything that has to do with figures from the past. Yeah, absolutely. So, I mean, but that's And that's all stuff that we'll talk about on the horror series. Right. So uh, very exciting things. Turning down the pipeline. I think we're going to have some good stuff. We got some React videos coming. Uh, we're going to do some creepy pastas. We're going to do some 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 new stuff. Uh, we're going to definitely expand upon our show lineup. So you guys getting in here now at the five dollar mark, you're going to be on the front. You're going to be on the front <laughs> line to see some, some some the creation of some new stuff. I think that yeah. you'll really enjoy it. So I'm excited. I I, I can't wait. <laughs> He's I'm, more excited. Can we be? I'm over, I'm over here, like actually, like calling him every day, like, "Hey, we need to get over we here." Did, to do I know, this. and my work schedule this. has we been need... absolutely just unbearable, and I'm thinking about switching jobs so I can actually be here on a more regular basis. Because I know this is, this is like I was like, um, we got uh, uh, this, and like I, we can if totally I had a, do if this. I had like, steady, knock this if out, I had like steady jobs. If I had this job in a steady format. As opposed to the crazy hours that I keep right now, I'd be able you to do more s- stuff. Or sleep. Or sleep, right. And that's the whole thing is like if I'm not working, I'm sleeping because I have to, because I have to reset my schedule because in 24 hours, I have a completely different shift that I have to work. And mm-hmm. it's, it drags, man. It drags on the, it drags on you. And I've been doing this for almost a year now and it's, it's starting to kick my ass. <laughs> but I know Chris is excited to get all these stories and stuff and all these new shows popped off because that's less, he has to carry that's less i mean it's more work that he has to do but it's less that he has to carry the the the, the burden of gpr so right. I know there, there's excited. more there's more than two shows and then when we more look content. at people and go like hey not only if, if, if we get a new show like every <clears throat> single day would be ideal like our uh uh the our viewer from glasgow 
Yep. There was like, uh, I don't really like that stuff. I, I, whatever. Yeah. But I'm more of this. And well, guess what? We have a show coming for you. Yeah, we do. Um, so it was a discussion that was being held um, before she had commented. Yeah. <laughs> and then when she commented, uh, I was like, you know what? Uh, let's just pull the trigger. Let's just do it. You know, and, and that's that's how we did Sunday Night Madness when it first started. That's mm-hmm. how GPR got started. Just pull the trigger and go. Yeah. And 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 basically well, there was a lot of him hauling with GPR, and then it was uh, me just going, "All right, I'm done him hauling. I'm done waiting on everybody else. <laughs> let's just kick this pig." And then we we only uh, like I mean, we were behind Joe Rogan by like six months. <laughs> I mean, Sunday Night Madness. <laughs> when we first started that show even was it, it, that's kind of what it developed into is me and Mike had sat down. We kicked around the idea of doing some kind of podcast, some kind of metal type podcast where we talked about music and culture and just had these hilarious conversations because he and I would sit at the casino for hours, hours at like one, two, three o'clock in the morning. We would sit at the casino in this little, this little cafe they had, we'd get food and drinks and we would just sit there. We wouldn't even gamble. We'd just sit there and BS and have these hilarious conversations. And finally it came up one day, let's do a podcast. And we had this conversation and we went back and forth and this was probably months. And I uh, mentioned the idea to Chris, a uh, Topher. And he said he was on board and I brought it to Mike and I was like, Mike, we got a platform, dude, let's go. And he was kind of like, well, I don't know. And I was like, no, this is, we're doing it this day. <laughs> it's going to be called Sunday night madness. And he and I talked about that name and that's what we came up with. And then we showed up to do the show and Jeff brought, we brought Jeff with us and, the rest is history, and we started doing the show, and now we brought we're... Jeff with the idea that I was going to show him how to do everything from the board, <laughs> which is how he got that nickname. By the way, that's why he's Jeff to producer because that was the original <laughs> intention. He was going to run the boards. He was going to be the producer, quote producer of the show, and then he realized that back when we had the first, very first studio, <laughs> he would actually have, have to sit separate. From in the producers' else. room, in the producers' booth, you guys can check out all. That. It's all archived in the on the Geek Public Radio page. Uh, I think our first episode's on there, isn't it? I think so. A lot of that stuff got. Yeah, we lost, lost a lot of footage, which is really upsetting because Mike was on a lot of that stuff when, too. When I mean, you look at the fact that we had, um, just Geek Public Radio in general had eleven years. Yeah, and yeah, there's a lot. There's of only stuff forty four videos that sort of have survived. Yeah. Depressing. And a lot of those, a lot of those are just audio videos, like of yeah. the podcast, which better than zero. <clears throat> but um, yeah, so we're gonna. I'll have to. I'm gonna. I'm gonna deep dive. I'll try to see if I can recover some stuff on YouTube because I, I actually might still have them on the old Sunday Night Madness page on Facebook. So and that's another thing too. You know, check us out on all your social media. We did media live platforms. streams on Facebook. We did. Yeah. You know, all of that stuff. So, yeah, you can check us all out on there. Check us out on Facebook, wherever you get your social media. Um, you can check us out there. Go to Minds, M-I-N-D-S, Minds.com. You can check out our videos there. Right. Um, this one will be up shortly. Uh, Sunday, yeah. Monday. Uh, so do all of those things. Check us out on social media. Like and subscribe on YouTube. Become a member. Uh, all the crazy and stuff. And they're breaking the veil because like, we, we record these on Friday. So if you're a member, you would know like, yes. on Friday night <laughs> at, at you know. Roughly 8 o'clock. <laughs> 8 o'clock, start watching the member <laughs> section because every Friday there's going to be a live show. Yep, we do a live show every single Friday. And then pretty soon here we'll be doing a live show probably every day. Things are going to start rolling in hot and heavy pretty quick there. So sponsors out there, if you're looking for a spot. Uh, there are spots that are available to you, so make sure you get at us. There's contact info information on the website, so make sure you check us out there. So, um, yeah, anyways, uh, new video games coming out. We uh, talked about all that stuff. We've got uh, uh, the Dune RPG. You guys can check that out on modifius.com. It's uh, <coughs> Dune Age of Imperium. I'm pretty sure I said that wrong again. <laughs> <laughs> Adventures in the Imperium, Chris. Adventures. Adventures. Dune Adventures in the Imperium. Good God, Age of the Imperium. I know what I... I yeah. Well, that that, that I, leads yeah, us into the next It thing, does lead so. us into the next So speaking of ages of Imperiums and other things like that, um, we are going to check out, for the first time, we're going to actually check out a gameplay trailer and live react to that trailer with you guys. So this will be the first time that we've done this. <laughs> It'll it's be going, interesting. It's going to be interesting to uh, say the least. So let's uh, no time like the present. So I guess we'll just jump right into that. This is uh, 
well, I guess not jump right in. So this is uh, Age of Empires 4, which was uh, announced last year. They were supposed to release it, but obviously with Fifi and other things like that, there have been significant delays with the release of the game. Um, Age of Empires is a long-standing strategic gameplay a PC game. Uh, it's actually been on Xbox and, and things like that, too, but it is a long-standing game that has had, you know, obviously, one, two, and three, and each one has... I would say exponentially increased upon the fun strategy and gameplay of the previous installment. And so hopefully four follows in that same vein. I have seen some stills. I have read some uh, early access stuff and I'm pretty on board with what they've been doing. And I look forward to the release. This will be the first time we've watched the trailer. So uh, we're going to go ahead and play that and, We'll see how see how All this right. thing looks. I'm excited. Oh, hold on. <laughs> oh, now what? <laughs> ah, trying to do this from behind. <laughs> do we have volume? That's that's what I was <laughs> wanting to check. Do we got it? Oh, there it is. Okay. All right. It looks gorgeous. It does. It says all captured with a game engine. So this was all gameplay. And that's a big thing with this game is that it, it takes place in different ages <clears throat> of humanity. Like in this case, the Dark Ages. does look really good. It looks significantly better than the third installment. <laughs> Pick those berries. <laughs> wow, the hunting was... That's clean. This is still... I think this is a gameplay trailer from... You know, they're still in development, so... As they build Hadrian's Wall. <laughs> That looks good, though, too, though. I mean, it really does. Fog of War being rescinded like it's supposed to. That looks a lot lot crisper. What's this dude doing? Are they atta He's attacking. Dude, I, <laughs> I don't even feel bad for you. You picked that fight. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, here comes the retaliation. Oh, so hi. How are you? Yeah, bow maidens. That's pretty dope. Uh, note to self. Don't go with red. Don't pick red. <laughs> oh, and as usual, war is a justification for building an opulent structure. <laughs> there you go. Oh, we're at war. Got to build a church. <laughs> oh, oh. All right. Um. What? What? Oh, oh, that's awesome. Oh, that's so cool. <clears throat> so you can actually be a nomad. That's that's awesome. That is that mobile is, a mobile base. Like, oh, okay, well I'll just start my city here and we'll do this and like, oh no. Uh, our gold mine's tapped. Yep, Boost see is, ya. Or oh they've raided. We've been attacked. Let's move over here. That's pretty awesome. Oh, and see, and that's the other thing too. Oh, there's a there's an impending there's an impending attack. Time to go. Look like a scout up there. Can you ambush? <gasps> oh, that is awesome. That's got a an extremely uh, command and conquer type feel to it. Look at that. Now that is some strategic planning. Agreed. Using the fog of war, setting your ambush, and then having your cavalry block set, their block their escape. Sit just outside of eye shot. That's excellent. Ooh, here we go. <laughs> what? I'm not gonna lie. I'm excited about the uh, elephant riding. I said the war elephants. <laughs> And the siege towers. That's awesome. 
I wonder what the mechanic is going to be for the siege towers. Like, is it like a troop carrier where you load up all of your troops into a, a and then take it out and I don't know disembark? The, uh, the destruction graphics actually look pretty neat too. The the way that now look at that, that's cool. So structures look like they take different levels of damage, and I mean they did that before, but it's right. it's definitely more pronounced now depending on the structure it appears. And I'm assuming it functions similarly to the previous installments. Ooh, the Imperial Age of Chinese versus Mongols. Okay. Oh, wow. <laughs> Their clothes have changed, the, the weaponry changes, all that good stuff. Still, still intact from previous installments. I, I guarantee that's probably the hardest thing about this game is getting all those assets in there to load at specific intervals and times. Oh. <laughs> awesome. Getting them all hyped up. So then you have the uh, English coming in with their cavalry. and That's the Mongols. Is it, was it the Mongols? I thought yeah, it was that's English. The, that's the Mongols, uh-uh. Eng English and Chinese. Uh-uh, Mongols versus Chinese. Yeah. Teach me to reread the, the stuff. Right. I was say, yeah, the Chinese war machine was almost unstoppable once it once it got into its into its full might. Oh, but here come the here come the Mongols. Yep. Here comes the horde. Yup. <laughs> I got stepped on. I'm impressed. It looks it looks pretty fantastic. Fall of twenty twenty one. Okay. Brought to you by Microsoft, apparently. <laughs> uh, yeah, that looks pretty good. I'm excited I, for that. No, yeah, that that looks uh, really, really good. I I, I kind of want to play it now, though. I wonder, <laughs> if there, I wonder if there's some early access we can get our hands on. <laughs> we need to we need to get on Steam and get our, get get into the early access. Right. Oh my goodness! Speaking of early access, I'm still cranking away on Valheim. By the way. Yeah, did you see that there's a mod, or that people are trying to mod it to be, make it a thousand player MMO? I did see that, and I'm actually not looking forward to that. I think it's no, because like that came out, and I was like, "Ooh, we could literally have our own thousand player MMO server." Like ran out. That would of here. be cool. That would be kind of cool. <laughs> though. <laughs> well, we're always, we're already talking about like setting up a, a GPR server. I think that'd be pretty neat. I think uh, we as could much do as that. we play. They're You're talking about like hard to be on. like weather de degrading and all of the other stuff. Um, I am away from my base so much that when I come back, I have to repair everything. Repair everything anyway. Yeah. So this would be a a chance for us to bring in and. You know, but I was thinking, I was like, you could totally make it your own MMO if yeah. you had like a thousand people. So you like you have the one guy who's like, you know what? I'm just gonna go out here and I'm gonna farm all of the the coins mm -hmm. and then what you can do is you want to make a like some gold coins then you come with like your hose and, and you make all all of this stuff and then you sell it to us we'll give you that and yeah. then you, like, there's there's an entire you know, element like, that i miss <clears throat> literally that. create the uh a whole economy oh yeah uh, just on like okay well, well i got like I, i'll give you five coins for a hoe well all the elements for the economy are, are there Right. So there's the resource gathering, there's the adventuring, mm -hmm. there's the raiding. So, uh, and then you have pearls, rubies, amber, gold. So, and then you can even reward people with, you know, um, let's say you're a much higher uh, progression level than someone else and they accompany you, then you could give them like brand new materials. Now, yeah. the caveat trade off to that is, and you have to be careful because I made some serious mistakes. And I pay for them now. Um, but when you get new material, the game considers that asset to be unlocked 
<clears throat> when it's supposed to be, which means you trigger mobs associated with those resources. Yes. So sometimes, even if you can get a thing, sometimes it's good to just not get the thing because bad things can happen to you. And I'll off law, off air. I'll I'll tell Chris about that, but I'm not going to bore you guys with it. I don't want to ruin things for you. But um, <laughs> there's some things you should just or, just leave stuff alone. Or just when, as you're just, uh, just you're alone. you're looking at things like, oh well, I can take out this boss, and like as soon as you take out the next boss, uh, other it triggers the next yep, boss the next to event. start like att- harassing you and whatnot. It's like, uh, I have heard that once you get <clears throat> past the third boss, it does become much easier. Uh, things start to unlock and open up to you, and it's it's more about exploration so I at got, your own pace. I got I got to the third boss, and then now I'm being attacked by wyverns. <laughs> Just see, random aerial <laughs> attacks. <laughs> see, I'm I'm the old school consummate RPG grinder, where all of my stats are probably much higher than they need to be for the level that I'm at, and and then when I go and fight stuff, I'm like, oh, <laughs> that was. <laughs> kind of disappointing. That's what I said about because like everything I was. Yeah, I'm in. Uh, I'm in a separate. I'm in three separate biomes right now that I'm not supposed to be in, messing <laughs> around, like doing stuff I'm not supposed to do, because I can because my armor and everything like that is upgraded. But um, I'm actually having fun with a couple of mobile games right now too. Oh yeah. Yeah. So I've been playing a lot of AFK Arena, but you know, a mobile game and even a PC game that I've actually been getting into lately. Raid Shadow Legend. I'm just kidding. <laughs> They're not paying us. I know, right? <laughs> they pay everybody else. You guys thought you were gonna make it through an entire video without that happening. You know what'd be even funnier too? What? Is if right when I said that, you know what mobile game you know, also PC game is also great, and as I turn to the camera it cuts to commercial and it's commercial for <laughs> <laughs> It'll just be funny if it breaks down that way. I doubt it will, but right. YouTube's weird, so But no, they're not paying us. Uh, I haven't even played that game, to be quite honest with you. I'm sure it's fun. There's a lot of people that play it. I'm sure it's a very entertaining game. But mm-hmm. I just, AFK Arena is something I've been playing. And for a game that's named AFK Arena, <laughs> it certainly requires a lot of attention. <laughs> <laughs> um, <coughs> but what's neat about it is if you don't participate, like you can do your dailies. And I log in, I do my dailies, and it honestly takes me roughly five to seven minutes. I log in, collect my stuff, do my thing. And I'm in and out five five to anywhere from I think five I might to ten have minutes. Played that one? What? Um... It's not too bad. It's actually it's it's fairly fun, and they are constantly updating it. And it's from Lilith Lilith Games, and they actually do a pretty good job of keeping it updated and keeping it fresh and introducing new characters without usually without game breaking elements. Not always, but a lot of times, some of the. Uh, they're called dimensionals. I'm not going to get into specifics, but some of the dimensionals are extremely game breaking. And once um, I figured it out, like I heavily pursued. But the that's game the other, breaking. The game breaking. Oh yeah, of course. <laughs> I was not going to be left behind on that one. It was an extremely game breaking character, and I was like, oh, I have to jump right into that now. Um, <clears throat> but every character in the game can be unlocked through gameplay. They, right. Nothing is locked behind paywall. The only thing locked is like the subscription stuff where you get just bonus stuff. Um, stuff that makes your life a lot easier in the game. But not anything that can't be achieved through just normal gameplay, which I like. It's There's no gatekeeping. So I actually appreciate that about that. So Lilith did a good job, I, in my opinion, of creating a game that's... It's not overly unique. And almost all of the gameplay is identical. Mm-hmm. It's the same thing repeatedly, but it's done in a way that makes it feel more fresh than it actually is, <clears throat> and it, so it keeps you playing and coming back for more. Is that the one where you got to run around and pick up um, one of the battle, one of the arena things? Um, you don't run around and pick up anything. You literally don't control the characters at all. You set your formations and then you battle. Yes, yes. Yeah. And, but you're like you follow this little line across to do whatever. Like okay, the next battle and yeah, yeah, it's, yeah. it's a trail and then it like yeah. takes to like stage thirty whatever. Like I think I'm on stage thirty three and some change. Right, and then you can do which your, is really high by the way because most then you have like the challenge mode where you're playing against other people. Right, yeah, yeah. the arena. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but that's that's it. AFK Arena is what it's called. And yeah, I, I played but, that for a while and then I got into the some that. Uh, uh, where you're running around picking up 
building up your army or whatever and then you're like fighting and if you defeat this other person's army like you absorb all of their people and that's pretty cool uh, i haven't seen anything like that um i can't remember what that one was but uh that one was fun until you got to like two juggernauts just sitting (laughs) and the field is shrinking oh yeah no no i don't want none of that (laughs) so it's like literally you just like 30 people versus 30 people, and you're just, like, watching the numbers go... Right. And then the fog comes in and kills half of the thing. It's whoever has the bigger... Whoever stays That's in the obnoxious. Middle. Whoever stays so it's in like, the middle. Uh, it's like King of the Hill versus Bad Weather. <laughs> yeah. It's yeah. like, it's like oh, well, we'll just take the, the PUBG Fortnite idea of... Right. Of this... The storm. The storm. Or whatever it's and, called, yeah. And then add it to the... Yeah, which is... A neat idea because it keeps people from <coughs> hiding on the sides of the, the right. thing. Yeah. So I, I actually think that's a pretty cool concept in my opinion. Um sometimes it's cheesy, but I got like first time I ever played PUBG, I got like third place because of that. I literally well, like, I literally PUBG, I literally hid I hit a lot. I got like most of the game. Four, I want to say I got four kills. I mean I got I got I four kills and then I just kind of survived toward the very end, and then once the fog came, finally, it finally got to where I was kind of chilling out. Like I was in a pretty wide area that I was like making my bones in, um, and then the fog or the storm actually happened to like sent like ding near center on where I was, and then it started. <laughs> and I was like, I don't have to move for a long time. This is pretty dope. And so I just kind of hung around. People got close to me. I kill them, and eventually it got to the point where like the fog started to hit the edge of where I was. And I was like, ah, I better start moving. And the minute I did, I got popped. <laughs> I mean, it was like the instant I popped out of that hole. I was like, bink. I was like, Oh, okay. I, uh, I it got to the point where I was consistently in the top five. Yeah. Like consistently, but it was because I hid, I would be the guy that would go find the little shack right in the, in the area, sit there with a shotgun and like right, right, right behind bang. the door. Yeah, just <laughs> boom. Okay, shut the door. You don't you know, gather yeah. your stuff, set, shut the door. <laughs> boom. Because you're, oh. you're a jerk. <laughs> yeah, uh, they, they were like, quit camping. No, I'm like, no. no. Don't, don't come in my house. Yeah, don't come in my house. <laughs> Get off my lawn. <laughs> That's what you should have shouted every single time. <laughs> Get off my lawn. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, no so ticket. there's uh there's like I said a few, uh, but there's even a PUBG mobile game too. But there's a few mobile games I've been playing and stuff like that. So that, but AFK, um, there's another one. that's like uh, Empires and Puzzles. But at this point, I'm kind of tapped out on it because I got stuck in one of those AFK games. But it was yes, a you hit a uh, wall and it's a wall. It straight up is a. a... It was like evil, idle evil or something like that. Oh, like I, there was. It was one of the idle games. There's idle heroes. This there's is a, like idle evil. Like you're okay. in hell. Oh, and, okay. And you are, you have like pain stations and you have like, you can like get your demons to like. Oh, I think I know exactly <clears throat> what you're talking about, but I cannot remember what the name the, of it's the, called. The, it was, I, I started playing. It's on play- Steam too, by the way. I, I started playing it because they had false advertisements. Where they had like this puzzle thing that you had to like move around and, and the whatnot. The sticks, you got to pull the sticks out and, and all yeah, that. Yeah, it was like, yeah. okay, well, you do this and yada, yada, yada. And I was like, oh, that looks like a fun game. So I started, you know, whatever. I was like, when does that start? There's actually, there's there now there is a game mm-hmm. that's built that way. Well, no, they added it to the game. Did for, they really? For like one, like the one thing. And they were like, oh, we're going to do more. And then nobody Nothing. apparently played that part of it. So they just got rid of it and just went back to well, doing. This the, is the, the issue. And you'll see this. if Even if you go on a Steam and other things like that, there's a pretty severe issue. I think that's a good topic for next week. Mm-hmm. Um, well, is, next show. Anyway. Next show, rather. Is you got to be careful of some of these developers. Mm-hmm. Before you purchase a game from Steam, before you purchase a game online, look at the developer see what other games they have worked on. Find their most popular game. The most popular game with the most downloads is typically the one they pay attention to. Some of the smaller games that they have, <coughs> they don't care that you're going to drop four bucks, five bucks. They're going to microtransaction you 15, 20 times, and that's that's exactly what they'll do. Mm-hmm. And if they get a 10,000 people to spend $10, they've just monetized their whole other game. Yeah, there you go. And so... Sometimes they'll do that, and 
it's a shady practice, but it happens. And I think we'll talk about some of that next time too. And we'll all even talk about some of the culprits that have done it because there's several of them and they do it on steam too. They'll build a game and then put it on early access for X amount of money and people will buy it. And, and then, then they'll never do anything with it. And they'll never do anything with it. Never but that's what it. that's what you know, makes everybody so happy about Valheim because they're constantly they actually are working on it. They actually oh, well, it's had also to a put, playable game that helps. Right. They actually <laughs> pushed back the release date because they've stopped being able to work on the development side of things and actually fixing the bugs that people are bringing up. Say, hey, well, this is so they've actually went back and started retooling some of the stuff. Yep. Which I found uh, out, by the way, that's why the the first couple of bosses are so difficult. <laughs> they, they did that on purpose <clears throat> to slow player progression down so they could work on the end game <laughs> stuff. <laughs> Which is kind of cheesy, but I was like, oh, that's pretty smart, though. Well, I mean, you gave it early access with only five bosses. Yeah. So, I mean... Um, but it's and I'm on I'm I'm getting ready to head to four and I'm debating on whether or not I want to. <laughs> uh, dragon's gonna whoop your ass. Probably. <laughs> dragon's gonna whoop you. I mean biomass. <laughs> kick. Uh, of course I bone uh, mass. Yeah, bone. You mass. said biomass, but that's a well, that's a software developer, <laughs> right? <laughs> um, but uh, uh, because I'm a bow guy, I I I sit back and shoot, and he's a giant ooze. Ooze. I mean, he's essentially a giant ooze. And so I was like, oh, I'll just stay out of his range. He, he kind of reminded me of Slimer a little bit, like a really beefed out steroid injected Slimer. Yeah. So, like, yeah. I'll just sit back here and. I found his booze. weakness, by the way, and I'll tell you. I'm not going to tell you guys. If you guys want to know, then uh, check out our members page. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, I found out his weakness. Yeah, because I, like, Iron Arrows is not it. Not it took even a little me bit. Forever. Nope. Not Iron Arrows. Uh, Frost Arrows helps, but that's still not his weakness. <laughs> All right. Okay. So yeah, we've uh, we've covered a couple quite a range of topics. You're talking about doing the RPG, mm-hmm. um, adventures in the Imperium. Bang! I didn't have to look at it that time. <laughs> Talk about doing adventures in the Imperium, the 2D20 system from Modiphius. Um, that's going to be a really cool thing. We checked out the Age of Empires 4 trailer. Uh, we discussed some mobile games. We've discussed up and coming shows. You guys don't want to miss that a true crime show, the horror series that we have, some creepy pasta readings, some audiobooks, and other stuff like that that we're actually going to start getting into as well. So you guys don't want to miss. We got a lot of content coming for the website on geekpublicradio.com. You don't want to miss it. It's going to be a blast, and hopefully, we have you guys every step of the way. And our members only section is available to you right now. It's five bucks a month. It's a, it's a recurring charge if that's the way you want to do it. Sponsors, feel free to jump on board anytime. Just let us know using the contact information at the bottom of the webpage. Uh, and we'll be sure to get with you guys as soon as we possibly can. So I think we're good. Yeah. Appreciate you guys tuning in. I'll let you do your sign off, brother. This is your show. I feel like I took the whole thing over tonight, man. I'm really sorry. Well, no, you're just all pumped. <laughs> I am. I'm super hyped. Like you guys have no idea. I'm like super hyped right now. <laughs> well, since uh, we don't have to, to plug the right the the things, you know, that's pretty much it. Yep. Like tune know. in next week for Sunday Night Madness, same bat time, same bat channel. Mm-hmm. And uh, then the weekend after that, you know, will be the next episode where we're talking about more stuff on Steam yes, and sir. Uh, what to watch out for, and uh, maybe we'll catch another gameplay. Vi- uh, video. Yeah, and, I like that. I think that was fun. Like, I actually really enjoyed that. So, some more gameplay footage coming to you guys. Yeah, maybe we'll do that. So, so uh, we will see you all later. Peace.